Elections in India. In this module, you will learn about the procedure for holding elections in India. Election is the process by which people choose their representatives and change them at regular interval of time. Elections are necessary in a democratic country to ensure the participation of people. Free and fair elections constitute the key element of a successful democracy. Through elections, the voters make many choices like decide on who will make laws for them, choose who will form the government and take major decisions, and also choose the party whose policies will guide the government and law making. In India, elections are held every five years to the Lok Sabha at the national level and the Vidhan Sabha at the state level. In addition, regular elections are held for the local bodies. We can now understand and study the process of election to the Lok Sabha, also called the General Elections. India follows a system of area-based representation. In this system, the country is divided into several areas or electoral constituencies for the purpose of electing representatives. The voters in each constituency elect a representative to the Lok Sabha from that area. This representative is called the Member of Parliament, abbreviated as MP. At present, the country is divided into 543 parliamentary constituencies. Similarly, for elections to the Legislative Assembly, each parliamentary constituency is divided into several assembly constituencies. Each assembly constituency elects a member for the Legislative Assembly. This representative is called the Member of Legislative Assembly, abbreviated as MLA. The constitution framers have provided the system of reserved constituencies for the weaker sections. This was done with a foresight to ensure proper and ratio based representation to the socially and economically deprived and weaker section in the Parliament of India and the state assemblies. Under this system, some constituencies are reserved for people belonging to the scheduled castes, SC, and scheduled tribes, ST. This means that in a SC reserved constituency, only someone belonging to the scheduled castes can stand for election. Same is true for an ST reserved constituency. The number of reserved seats is in proportion to their share in the total population. Once the electoral constituencies are finalized, the Election Commission of India, the principal body responsible for conducting elections, draws up an electoral roll or voters list. This list contains the names of those who are eligible to cast vote in the elections. In India, every citizen aged 18 years and above has the right to exercise vote in an election regardless of his or her caste, religion or gender. A complete revision of the list takes place every five years to keep it up to date.
The Election Commission of India also issues election photo identity card to all the voters. But the card is not yet compulsory for voting. The voters can show many other proofs of identity like the ration card or the driving license. Candidates from different political parties contest in the elections and compete to secure the votes of the voters. The candidate nominated by a party gets the party symbol and support. The party's nomination is commonly called the party ticket. However, before contesting the election, the candidate must fill the nomination form and must remit the stipulated money as security deposit. Recently, in accordance with the direction from the Supreme Court, the candidates must also furnish details of their assets and liabilities, criminal cases pending against them, and educational qualifications. Since the main aim of the contesting candidates and the parties is to win the elections, they try to woo the voters during election campaigning. In these campaigns, the political parties use different methods and try to focus the public attention on some big issues. They also declare before the voters their proposed plan of action and policies. The polling day or the election day is the final stage of the election. The voters go to the nearby polling booth and cast their vote in favor of the candidate of their choice through the electronic voting machine EVM which records the casted votes. Once the polling is over, all the EVMs are sealed and taken to a secure place. Later, on a scheduled date, all the EVMs from a constituency are opened and the votes are counted. The candidate who secures the highest number of votes from a constituency is declared as elected. Thus, we find that the election process in India is very elaborate and has several stages. Let's recall what you have learnt. Election is the process by which people choose their representatives. In India, elections are held to the Lok Sabha at the national level and the Vidhan Sabha at the state level every five years. India follows an area-based system of representation. In this system, the country is divided into several areas or electoral constituencies for the purpose of election. The voters in each constituency elect a representative to the Lok Sabha from that area. The constitution framers have provided a special system of reserved constituencies for the weaker sections. The Election Commission of India draws up an electoral roll or voters list. Candidates from different political parties contest elections and compete to secure the votes of the voters. During the election campaign, the political parties use different methods and try to focus the public attention on some big issues. They also present before the voters their proposed plan of action and policies. The polling day or the election day is the final stage of the election. Once the polling is over, all the EVMs are sealed and taken to a secure place. On a scheduled date, 
all the EVMs from a constituency are opened and the votes are counted. The candidate who secures the highest number of votes from a constituency is declared as elected.